Howdy everyone, it's Kyle and today's C programming tutorial is covering task management. In the wonderful and magnificent realm of computing, what exactly is a task? A task is a unit of programming that contains all of the instructions and commands and etc., all of the procedures that a computer follows to execute your program. In C specifically, all programs are going to have a task called the main task, which is, you know, real creative. And that's where the bulk of all of your programming is going to happen. However, you have the option to create other tasks uh, to allow your program to multitask. And I'll talk all about, uh, first, the main task, how to create other tasks, how to start and end manage tasks, and things like CPU allocation. So let's just dive right into it. Now it's time to see what task control looks like in real C code. The first thing you'll notice when you open up a C file is that you have what's called a task main here. So this is the main task. And this is where more or less most of your code is going to go. And if your program only has one task, it's going to be your main task. You won't have any need to create any other tasks. As a matter of fact, a C program must have a main task in order to execute. You can't rename this something else. The, the code simply won't compile in it. It won't be able to run. But let's say you have your main task, but you also want to run a second task in parallel to the main task. What would that look like in the code? So what you're going to do is first you need to declare your task, and you do that in uh, the code at the top of the code file above task main. So this is above the uh, the body of, of the task where, where the main task is declared. That's very important. What you're going to do is first you're going to type task to declare that what you're defining is a task and then you're going to give it a name. I'm just going to name my task 2, okay? And then you have to give the two parentheses at the end which is the argument um, and that's that's how you pass variables to the task and whatnot. That, that'll be something I go over in a future tutorial. And then you have to give the task a body. So this is the code that's going to execute in your second task. So you can write anything. So I'll just write do something and this will uh, be where all of the operations and all of the uh, executions, all of the instructions that you want your task to execute will live in this body. And then be sure to close that body. So we've declared this task. Now if we compile, it alerts me that this task, even though it's, it's here, it's, it exists and it, it's declared, it's not doing anything. And that's because we haven't started the task. All auxiliary tasks must be started from task main. And I'll show you what that looks like now. So we'll go into the main task, and you have to write the command start task. And then in the argument of start task, you're going to write the name of your task. So mine was task2. Punctuate that with a semicolon and compile. And everything is now fine and error free. So what this does now is it's going to, uh, when, when the code runs, the CPU acknowledges that task2 exists. And it starts actually at the main task. And when it's entered the main task and that's begun, it also sees that it has to start task called 2. And it's going to start that as well, and they're going to run at the same time. Now, how does, how does a CPU manage two tasks running simultaneously? Each task is assigned a priority from 0 to 255, where the higher the number, the higher the priority. By default, all tasks are assigned a priority of 7, uh, but this is something you can change, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. The CPU assigns each task a what's called a time slice, which is a small segment of time in which that task is allowed to execute any of its instructions. And then it goes around between all of the tasks you have in a round-robin style. Um, and of course it's going to give more attention or more CPU time to the task with a higher priority rating. But there are ways that you can manipulate this and uh, this is using task control commands and I'll show you what those look like right now. So right now uh, we can pull up the variable. So this is k default uh, task priority. Looks like that. And this is actually, this is not a command, this is just a value that's stored. As I mentioned before, the default task priority is 7. So this right here is actually uh, a value of 7 that is stored. So I can make a variable, I can call it uh, priority, and then I, I add this equal sign. And what this does now is if I had declared a variable called priority, 
uh, what this will do is now set my variable priority equal to 7. So now priority holds the default task priority. Um, there are also uh, ones for the maximum task priority. So this is k high priority. Uh, sorry, capital right there. Um, when you type in k high priority, this now sets this priority variable equal to the highest priority rating, which is 255. And conversely, we also have k low priority, which is a priority level of zero, which is the lowest priority. Uh, there are some other things that you can do in terms of task control. Uh, and you can also override completely with the command hog CPU. Uh, and what this does is in whatever task this command is placed, it's going to give all of the CPU time to whatever task it's placed in. So in this case, right now hog CPU is in the main task. So it's going to start both tasks in the run simultaneously. But then when it gets to this hog CPU command, then this task effectively stops because now task main has all of the CPU power. And you could also put it in task two. And now task two, when it gets to this command, will have all of the CPU power. This isn't something I recommend doing uh, just because uh, CPUs usually have a way of budgeting their time uh, effectively unless there's like a, a very specific reason why you would need to do this. I don't see why you would uh, need to do it. And then of course if you if you say hog CPU you have to have a a command to release the CPU when you're done otherwise the other tasks will never go back to running. And the command for that is the aptly named release CPU task which looks just like that. So uh, just to recap, as the main task and task 2 are running in parallel, the main task gets the hog CPU, all of the CPU time goes to the main task until we reach this release CPU command, which then resets the priorities um, of, of the two tasks back to what they originally were and allows the CPU to allocate more time back to uh, task 2 and then task 2 will start again and they'll both be running in parallel. Uh, so that's the uh, the hog and release functions. The next task control function that's worth mentioning is called abort time slice. And this goes back to what I was talking about before with the time slices. Remember I said all of the tasks are executed with a certain allocated CPU time slice in a round robin fashion. What this command does is uh, when this task encounters this command, it's going to end that task, but it's temporary. That, so that task doesn't end permanently. It just ends its execution at that time and allows it to move on to the next task. And then as it's going around in its round robin fashion and it comes back to the main task again, it's going to allow it to execute. So the, the abort time slice will only just end the current execution in the round robin and then ma main will be able to execute again uh, when the round robin comes around back to it. Uh, to execute its time slice. And of course you could put this into any task you'd like. So for example, in, if we put it in task 2, uh, then it'll, it'll skip over task 2 for that one time slice in the round robin rotation. Moving on, now we have a command that's called stop task. And this one is fairly self-explanatory. So um, what stop task looks like is in the argument of this command you'll type the name or the task ID of the task that you want to stop. So in this case, this is um, task two, and uh, I'll just punctuate it with a semicolon there. So what this means now is that uh, task main and task two will be running in parallel, and then when the main task encounters this command, stop task, it's going to permanently stop task two. So uh, unlike the other one, which was abort time slice, which just suspends task 2 until its rotation in the round robin comes again. This stop task command will permanently stop task 2 unless you say start task again. So for example, we started the task here and then we, we stop task 2 and then now we can start it again uh, if we want to later in the program. And then the final task command that I want to go over is stop all tasks. And what that does, as you could probably guess, uh, simply ends all of the tasks uh, that are executing right now and what this effectively does is it ends your program um, because if you if you stop all the tasks then obviously the main task ends and when the main task ends then the whole entire program ends because everything executes within the main task as I said before um, similarly if you were to use a stop task function for the main that would also end the program 
um, but this will this is a, a good way to stop your program and you want to if you had say a control structure so I said if uh, some condition uh, I don't I don't know what my condition is uh, then we can run the stop all tasks um, and then that'll just end our program so for example if I had a, a button that was wired into my program and so said if the button is pressed then we can uh, execute this stop all tasks and the program ends and um, and that's the end of it this if statement is what's called a control structure what do those do well you'll just have to keep watching and tune in to next week's video where I dedicate an entire tutorial on talking about control structures I hope to see you there thank you for watching my tutorial this week if you haven't already click here to check out my new book it's called building smart lego mindstorm pv3 robots and it's now available on amazon if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.